Listen, this whole week, we've been talking about taming your tongue. If you have missed a single episode, a single devotion, I really encourage you to go back and listen. We've got Kai, Q, uh, Pastor Sean, Pastor Mallory, all of them have, have shared an amazing word about taming the tongue. And so you should go back and make sure that you listen to that. Uh, happy Friday, everybody. It's finally Friday, and I hope you guys are having an amazing day. Thanks for everybody who's tuning in, who's sharing. And so if you haven't already, go ahead and share this um, devotion. Share this devotion so your family members and your friends can be blessed. Um, I'm Pastor Virginia, and I'm coming to you from upstate New York. And so it is pretty frigid um, out here. I don't know what it's like. Why don't you go ahead and tell me uh, what the weather is like where you are while people are hopping on here. Uh, we love you guys so much. Good morning from Rockwall, Texas. I'm sure it's not quite um, so cold there. Uh, we lived there for a short time and they just really don't know what cold is. You know, it gets gets chilly, but that's it. So uh, anyways, as you're hopping on, just a refresher, we've been talking about taming the tongue. Taming the tongue. Uh, you know, over this past week, you were hearing um, about how you'd get to decide by the words you speak who you serve. Will you serve God with your words or will you serve the devil with your words? Really, there's no gray area, as Q was explaining. Um, will you choose life? You know, Pastor Sean really dug into, uh, you know, you have a decision to make. You can choose blessings or cursings, life or death. Choose life. You know, the Word of God encourages you to choose life with the words you speak. Hello, good morning from Fate, Texas. Is that how you say that? Fate? A-T-E? I don't know. So uh, all our Texas family are, are on and we are so happy that you are. Um, anyways, there was so much more that was talked about regarding taming your tongue. So again, go back, make sure that you catch up on any of these devotions. But today I'm going to be coming at taming your tongue with a little different angle. We're going to be talking about taming the complaining tongue. Okay. Uh, complaining Really, you know, Kai, he talked about how, you know, there, he explained that you can, who, it says, who, the Bible says, who can tame your tongue, right? But we can tame our tongue through the power of the Holy Spirit. We have a helper. We have the Holy Spirit living on the inside of us, helping us with what we say, right? So we know that we can actually overcome our nasty little tongue that decides it wants to blow up, right? We can actually overcome that. And and Kai explained that. So uh, with that realization in our mind that we can, we, we actually can have control over our tongue through the power of the Holy Spirit, we're going to talk about how that includes complaining, right? With this society that, that you know, is is really overdoing the, the right of freedom of speech, you know, and basically they want to say, give you a, a self-righteous attitude and say, well, whatever feels good, you know, do what you want, say what you want, make it known, you know, it really, uh, it, it is a, a, um, a perverted version of the right of freedom of speech, okay? And so we really have to be careful with the motive that we have in our hearts with what we are saying, okay? And so because what it what's in our heart flow it, it flows out of our mouth, really. Luke 6:45 says a good person produces good things from the treasury of a good heart. And an evil person produces evil things from the treasury of an evil heart. What you say flows from what's in your heart, okay? So if you're full of self-righteousness and everything must go your way, then you're going to be a person of complaint. But... But today, I believe that even if you have been prone to complaining, that today things are changing in your life. As the word of God goes forth, things will begin to transform and change because it says we renew our mind by the washing of the word, right? Faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. So I believe as this word's going out today, that co the complaining spirit falls off you in Jesus' name and you become thankful, all right? Now I might be getting a little ahead of myself here. So if your heart though, on the contrary, right? If you're full of self-righteousness, then you're gonna be full of complaint. 
complaints, okay? But if you're full of the Word of God, if your heart is full of the Word of God, then it's going to be full of love. It's going to be full of reverence. It's going to be full of respect and honor for the Lord, for your Lord, for the Lord our God. We are going to have full respect and honor for Him and for His Word. It's going to be full of the knowledge of the Word of God, full of peace, full of goodness, right? See, Q, if you go back and you listen to her devotion, Q uh, shared a a really cool testimony of how, you know, she got saved before her husband did. So her husband was still an unbeliever. And so she said that at some point her husband uh, came to her and said, Hey, look, you're, you're, you know, proclaiming a Christianity, but your words really aren't lining up with that, right? See, we are a representation of Christ, right? So we have to make sure that that's being reflected in the things that we are saying, okay? And so I want you to take a look at this. A lot of times where Christians can come in error on this is that we decide, you know, because the Bible says like you should share burdens with one another and, you know, pray with each other when somebody's had, right? So what we do is we take these burdens or these issues and we share them with our our believers, our, our friends, our people at church, our spouses, whoever, right? Because we're like, oh, I'm just going to tell you about this so that you can pray, so that you can, you know, no. Uh, to, to share your burden asking for prayer can very easily, if your motive is not right in your heart, it can very easily turn into complaining, right? So you use that for an excuse. You actually are just complaining. You're word vomiting all over your friends, all over your family members, right? You're actually just complaining and you're, you're trying to camouflage it and, oh, I'm just sharing this with you so that you can pray. No, you're actually just complaining okay and so I'm gonna I'm gonna share with you a couple stories one is gonna be from myself and then one is gonna be from the Bible it's gonna be talking about the Israelites because listen when they were wandering in the wilderness that's the best example of complaining and and why that that's such a bad thing uh, that you could possibly get so but I want to share this with you because this is about sharing your burdens right you know um accidentally complaining, right? Because you're sharing your burdens with people. And it can start off like that. Your your heart can be right in the beginning, but if you don't if you don't keep it in check, it can easily move into complaining. So what I did was um you know, I'm I'm a full on 100% mom uh with my children all the time and my husband's not with them as much as I am. And so as soon as he would walk in the door, I'd be like, "Oh my goodness, you know, the kids were doing this today. They did this today. I had to spank them for this. I had to put them in time out for that. They just broke this." I mean, it it instead of it being like baby i had a rough day and i need you to to take over for a minute so i can have a mommy moment or you know can you pray with me for strength or something like that it turned into a list of complaints of how hard my day was with the kids and i had to really get a grip on that because you have power of life and death in your tongue. What you speak about, you bring about. So if you're constantly talking about the negative aspect of every situation in your life, you're just going to continue to get negativity. You're only going to produce that because that's all you're saying. That's all you're focusing on, right? So I had to really, really, really rein that in and pull that in. And let me tell you, taming the tongue, you know, as few of the others have already shared, it is probably one of the most difficult things to do, especially if you're trying to do it in your own strength. Thank the Lord for the Holy Spirit, because in our weakness, hallelujah, he's made strong, right? Can I get an amen? Somebody pop up an amen on there, on the comments. I want to know if you're being blessed by this, if you can, uh, you know, recognize what I'm saying in your own life. Do you, do you have things popping up right now that you can realize, good morning, thank you, uh, that you can realize that you, you You've actually just been complaining about and not not really having the correct motive. Thank you for those amens. All right, so let's let's talk about the Israelites, okay? The Israelites, man, they had the most miraculous, greatest escape ever, right? They were bound in Egypt. They were slaves. They were being beaten. They were mistreated beyond being mistreated, right? But we all know the story. And and Jesus brought them out of the land of Egypt. And they were promised the promised land, right? 
And so even after God, and you all should go back and read the story um, in Exodus. It, it's amazing. I mean, you could, there's also parts of it in Numbers and, and different things like that. But you should go back and read the whole story because it is totally miraculous how that they were brought out of the land of Egypt. Completely miraculous. And so even after all of that, as they're on this journey to the promised land, they decide that they're ready to complain, right? So look at this, right? The Egyptians were running after them. We all know the story of parting of the Red Sea, right? They get across on dry land. The sea crashes in on all the, the Egyptians, right? And, and they still, after that, decide they want to complain, right? They're saying, we have no water to drink and our, our water is, it, 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 we, we have nothing to drink. What are we going to do? So they start complaining that they have no water to drink, right? Well, what about when they're wandering in the wilderness? They say, actually, I'm just going to read it to you. Let's go to chapter 16 in Exodus. It's, um, let's see, uh, chapter 16, verse one, it says, having set out from Elam, the, the whole Israelite community came into the wilderness of sin, which is between, okay, it doesn't really matter. On the 15th day of the month, that doesn't matter either. Okay. They departed Egypt here in the wilderness. The whole Israelite community grumbled against Moses and Aaron. Who knows that they were actually grumbling against God. They were actually grumbling against God, not Moses. They were just complaining to Moses and Aaron, right? The Israelites said to them, if only we had died at the Lord's hand in Egypt as we sat by our kettles of meat and ate to our fill of bread. But you have led us into this wilderness to make this whole assembly die of famine. Unbelievable. But you know what? As unbelievable as we read this, as unbelievable as that sounds to us, we actually can find ourselves in this situation, right? We can be complaining to our coworker about our manager at work. Who's done that before? You can, but, but you have a job. Your bills are paid. There is food on the table. But yet you're complaining to your coworker about your manager, right? Ouch. Yeah, we do this in our daily life. We can sometimes forget all the goodness that God has put in our life because we're focusing on the little negative thing without seeing the bigger picture of the amazing blessing that we're walking in, right? We can actually steal our own blessing, and that's exactly what the Israelites did because who knows that they should have actually gotten to the promised land in a handful of days, and it took them 40 years. Their complaining delayed that promise for 40 years. It was ready for them in a handful of days. God had it prepared and ready for them, set there for them. But because their heart was tarnished, because they decided to complain and only focus on the negative things, they stayed in the negative things for 40 years. In the name of Jesus, I declare that will not be your story. That will not be your story. Whatever it is you've been complaining about, I rebuke it in the name of Jesus off your life. And I, I, right now, I believe that you're starting to get clarity in your mind. And you're starting to be able to focus in on the positive things and have a thankful heart. Because here's what happens. When you complain, you're opening up the door to offense. And these people, the Israelites, were offended by God. That is tough, but that's what happens. You It, it plays off as if you're offended with somebody, but you're actually offended with God when you're complaining about situations in your life because you're not respecting him, you're not honoring him, you're not recognizing the goodness that he's given you and the goodness that you can live in, all right? We're supposed to go from glory to glory to glory, right? We're supposed to abound in all grace. Grace is gifts, right? So we're supposed to be constantly living in this amazing gift of God. But yet we find ourselves complaining about these little things. So these little things become ginormous things and delay the promise. Complaining delays you. I think somebody actually put, put that up there, and that's exactly right. Thank you so much for engaging on there. I see people say, I'm receiving that in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I'm glad. I'm glad. The word of God doesn't go out and come back voice, so I know this is producing goodness in your life. So the only weapon against having an offended heart or a complaining heart is by praying, praise, thankfulness, right? We have to be thankful. First Thessalonians 5.18 says, give thanks in all circumstances, not complain in all circumstances. It says, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 
in all circumstances. Okay, so even when you feel like you're being treated unfairly, even when you feel like you're being treated unfairly, you don't complain. But so I'm gonna, I'm gonna share with you something. I was treated very wrong, okay, by, by some people in my life. Very wrong for a very long period of time. And I had to really work through this. This is when the Lord really, really taught me this lesson. Because what I had to do was I actually found myself first doing the same thing, telling telling my spouse, oh, here's what happened. Here's how they treated me wrong. And your wife is all distressed, right? And then he would pray with me and, and we would like get over the huddle and then they would do something else. And then, and then there I was again, <laughs> right? right? But I had to put on my big girl pants and realize that one day I, I was actually painting the wall in my house and, and I just realized I had allowed my joy to be stolen, right? Because I had a complaining heart. I was just complaining about what somebody else was doing. You, you can't control what other people do. You can control how you respond to it, but you can't control what other people do. So here, because of what they were doing, in there, they were in error because of what they were doing. I allowed it to steal my joy, and then I responded with complaining, right? And so I was painting the wall in my house, and, and I, I just was totally disgusted. I was just depressed, and I just felt just this, like I was complaining to God. You know that you can actually complain to God when you pray. That's why when I said pray, I said praise and thankful heart, because if you're going to God and you're just telling them the, him the list of how you've been wronged, that's still complaining, right? That's really not praying. That's really not, that's not, that's not helpful. God's not going to, God can't do nothing with that, right? But when you go to him and you just forget that stuff, you say, I forgive them in Jesus and you apply the word of God, right? You bless those who curse you. You know, you, you have to just rise above. You, you have to pull up that banner and rise above when the enemy comes against you. And so that's what you have to do. So that's what I did. I, st- I, I was so though distraught. This had happened for so long that I had gotten myself into such a funk that I couldn't really even pray words. Like I couldn't even pray. So what I did was I started singing because I'm telling you, just like the Jericho wall, when they were praising, they were playing their musical instruments. They were singing around that Jericho wall and they had to do it a few times, right? We know seven times they had to go around a few times. But eventually that wall came crashing down. And I believe whatever burdens that you're carrying today, as you begin to praise the Lord, the King of Kings, who brought you out of all your junk, who saved you, who washed you white as snow, that you will start rising above that thing and it will not matter to you anymore. It will not affect you anymore in Jesus' name. You got to praise your way out of it. But guess what happened? Praise turned into thankfulness. As I was singing, I started feeling happy, right? My joy was being restored because I was praising Jesus. And then I started thanking him and it was all that could flow out of me. Thank you, God, for blessing. I was just thanking him for this from the time I could remember all the way back from when I got saved as a kid. I mean, we're talking like just thanking, 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 thanking God for everything. And eventually, because I put my eyes on Jesus, that that the way those people were treating me bad, it, 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 it just, it dwindled away to nothing. It dwindled to nothing. It, you know, the, the things of this world grow strangely dim. You know that old hymn? That's what happens. And I wish that's what would have happened with the Israelites, but it wasn't. They chose to keep complaining. So they sat in their soot for 40 years. For 40 years. So you can decide to continue complaining to your spouse about your in-laws, to your coworker, about your manager, to your, your whatever, to your husband about your kids. Whatever it is, you can continue doing that and you'll never ever overcome that situation. Or instead of complaining, you can praise in Jesus' name, right? You can praise in Jesus' name. So... I know that you've been encouraged today, and I just want to remind you that what you speak about, you bring about. So make sure that everything that's coming out of your mouth is praising and thanking Jesus, because then these negative things that are happening in your life really just don't matter. We have to praise our way out of it. I'm going to read to you quickly just a handful of scriptures, and then I'm going to let you go for the day. Uh, 1 Corinthians 10.13 says, We all experience times of testing, which is normal for every human being, but God will be faithful to you. He will screen and filter the severity, nature, and timing of every test and trial you face so that you can bear it. 
And each test is an opportunity to trust him more along with every trial. God has provided a way of escape that will bring you out victoriously. So he provided a way of escape for the Israelites, right? But but how many of you know that God provides the way of escape, but we have to choose to take that path. We have to choose to take that. But there is another way we can go, and that's called complaining. We can go that route, and we can never come out victoriously. But that is not your story in Jesus' name. The, the a way of escape God has applied for us is the word of God. The, that, that God has provided for us is the word of God. We have to apply it. We have to apply biblical principles to our life. When something negative comes our way, we find a scripture, we stand on it. And then we praise our way out, right? So 1 Corinthians 10, 10 says, nor grumble, right? So it's saying, don't grumble as some of them did and were destroyed by the destroyer. So the word of God instructs us not to grumble, not to complain, right? Thessalonians 5, 8, so we have to apply that. We have to apply that biblical principle into our life. Don't complain. Just don't do it. Do not allow that tongue to complain, not for one second, right? For uh, Thessalonians 5, 18, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of your God. I already read that one to you, but it's huge. In all circumstances, we give thanks. And then here's the last one I'm gonna share with you. Philippians 2, 14 through 16. Do all things without grumbling or questioning that you may be blameless and innocent children of God without blemish in the midst of a crooked and twisted generation. How many of you know that right now we are living in such a twisted world that it is totally unbelievable. We have got to make a stand and make a change in our life. We have to reflect Jesus in everything we do, right? So in this crooked and twisted generation, among whom you shine as light in the world. Say, I am the light of the world. You got to proclaim that. You got to say that. You're the light of the world. You have the answer this world is looking for. Holding fast to the word of life. The word of God is the word of life. It's what will produce good in our life. It will be what produces life into our life, not death. You will come out victoriously in Jesus' name. So that in the day of Christ, I may be proud that I did not run in vain or labor in vain. To call yourself a Christian but complain all the time, that's laboring in vain. So we have to turn that complaining around to praise and you will come out victoriously in Jesus name. If you have been blessed by this, make sure you share this live broadcast. Make sure you share this daily devotion uh, so that somebody else can be blessed too. And if these have been blessing you, there is a way to sow into this ministry to help us continue getting the word of God out, to help us feed the hungry. You guys hear us say this almost every time that we are, we are actually sending money and helping feed the hungry, doing what the word of God has called us to do. And there are ways that you can do this uh, in the description section uh, above this you will see ways to give ways to sow into this ministry and if you do that we will send you a gift uh, we have a gift to send you we've got tumblers and we've got t-shirts and long sleeve shirts and if you will email us if you go to our website which will be posted if you go to our website and you let us know the amount that you sowed into the ministry we want to send a gift to you thanking you. We'll let you know, depending on the amount, uh, which gift you qualify for. I think if you do like $15, you'll get, uh, or $10, you'll get a t-shirt. $15, you'll get uh, the long sleeve shirt or the $30 at the tumbler, something like that. And so we'll, we'll get those gifts to you to say thank you to you for sewing in to the word of God. We love you so much. And we're so grateful that you join us every single day for these daily devotions. And uh, don't forget to share this broadcast. And remember, come back again tomorrow morning for another devotion. We love you so much. We'll see you.